this camera angle because it shows the machinery and the shop, but it always makes me look like I'm slouching way over. <laughs> In any case, this whole project has been pretty much so a mess, <laughs> which I guess happens to everybody at some point in time. Um, I can't believe I spent hours and hours designing this oil container and didn't actually spend the time to check that I had the correct tooling to build this thing with. First mistake was picking 14 threads per inch because I don't I knew too but didn't think about it that I don't have <clears throat> the insert or the tool to go that deep to put make that kind of thread so that was my first uh, mistake second one was I thought I had a boring bar deep enough <clears throat> to make this bottom didn't actually go and check it out um, <clears throat> lo and behold I did show realized that I didn't have the deep enough bar showed the big half inch guy in the last video that I bought <coughs> with a generic uh, steel, I think, carbide insert. Not really the best for aluminum. And I showed starting the boring with this. Uh, and somebody was nice enough to leave a comment on that video that that insert is not supposed, you're not supposed to use it as a drag tool, but a push. So you're supposed to cut going in, not out. But I've always had the best success, too, dragging with all my tools out. I get a better finish, so I'm going to keep doing that. Um, one or two where I asked him, you know, where do people learn <coughs> that you're supposed to push and not drag or whatever the tool? So later on in the last video, I showed the entire set that I bought so that I'm covered all bases for whatever I want to do in the future. And then I showed doing the finish on the, the base here with the new one, with the correct aluminum insert, gorgeous finish. I uh, figured, okay, put that in the drawer with the rest of the active tooling, put the half incher in the spare tooling drawer, because I'm not going to use that. That one too, I had a very hard time trying to figure out what the insert was for it. It's a 3251. Well, there's 50, 51, and 52, and that's the radius on the tip. So 50 is the smallest. It's like 8 thou radius, and it goes up to, I think, a 64th. So that thing is in the drawer. I wasted money on that tool, and I wasted money buying more inserts for it, which I think are still on the way. They're from China. It's like 25 bucks or 10 or I forgot what the price was. But I showed the um, whole set that I bought, and I figured, you know, I'm putting it in the drawer. This, I'm probably not going to use this again for a long time. Lo and behold, here. This is a kick. No sooner than I show this boring bar set than I need it. <laughs> I'm going in. can't believe this thing. It's like two and a half inches. No chatter, beautiful finish. It's my aluminum insert, which I think has already got chip welding on it, but um, <laughs> I'll show, and I gotta look here so that I clear it all the way in. Where are you? There you are. So, just incredible. Using the uh, auto feed. Uh, let's do like a 4,000 cut. And it just goes and goes. I'm almost at target, 600,000. I think I have 50 left to go. I could actually go a lot further if I want. And Sunday, I should be getting the threading tool here to do that. Yeah. I can't believe I'm poking out that far and there's no chatter. That this compound and everything is that solid. Because that's a pretty heavy cut for this machine. Four or five thousand, he's pretty pushing it. <laughs> Chips are flying all over the place, including the floor. Even though I have this in place trying to stop them from flying out there. They're all over the tools and the holders and the jars back there. 
So I'm vacuuming it all up. And look at this. This beautiful finish in there. It just keeps coming out and coming out. It's almost too pushing the machine because I've only got, I think, an inch left before I'm all the way back as far as it can go. This is a 10 inch. Wish I would have bought the 12 inch lathe, but had no idea of anything back then. It was a new hobby. Perfect curls coming off of it. I checked it, it is on center. So I love that finish in there, that's just beautiful. So, like I said, no sooner than I bought it, I needed it. Okay, so I used it again. Now, um, so let me take you now over to the bench and kind of summarize um, where I am right now. I'm waiting for, and I'll mention it, a tool holder for that big wicked um, threading <laughs> insert. So uh, I'm sitting here waiting. I think it's supposed to be here Sunday now or something like that. But next video, hopefully I can finish this project. So see you next Friday. The well, problem, I guess, all came up because this guy is won't do deep enough threads to cover 14 threads per inch. So I found this guy on eBay. It's a giant one though, too. I was hoping it might fit this or I could get it in there somehow. It's not possible. So I went looking for a holder for this and I couldn't find anything that would fit in my lathe because they have huge holders for this thing. One inch, one and a quarter. I can't hold that. So I had shot a bunch of video. I was gonna just bang out quickly a holder for this thing. Um, the screw for it I don't have so I took this screw out and I took a regular three millimeter socket head put that screw in the lathe angled it to match the angle and so I've got a screw now that'll go in there took a piece of 1018 and I shot video of you know squaring it up it's 0.4 square all right, let's see how good or bad I did. <laughs> Should be pretty good, I know, I don't know. Uh, I haven't been able to use my touch DRO here. I'm still waiting for parts. Oh, you chips all over the place. All right, undo this, get rid of it. Oh, no, leave that there for the vacuum. So, I've already kind of cleaned it up here uh, on the belt sander for the final pass. And I'm at what, huh? 420, 421, 419. <laughs> I guess the sides probably are different here from the sander. 419, 420 within a thou. That's good enough. All right, so now let's take it over to the granite plate. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I'll lap it. That's a pretty nice finish on it, but no, I'm going to lap it anyway. So, all right, onward and upward. Put it on an angle block, put it in the mill, cut that. But now I'm sitting down and I'm starting to look at this guy going, you know, it would be nice if I could step it down like this, but then I wouldn't be able to lap this to get a nice finish on it. It'd be all mill marks. This is why I bought the grade A, because this was my main uh, granite plate surface. Grade B, every time I turn around I'm lapping on it, so I don't know how much damage I've done in the past. I don't think I've done any, but now I kind of don't have to care. 600 grit, this is pretty well used up, WD-40. And you just go at it and it gives a really nice finish, let me tell you. Also gets it super flat for the holder. And um, this thing also has a, a cut here, 
So that would be easy. I can just put that in a D-bit uh, grinder and I'd have a nice face to it and the angle. And then all I have to do is just cut this off and do the hole. But the more I keep looking at it going, you know, I will not be happy with this guy. And <laughs> I'd like a nice uh, holder or whatever. So I spent hours and hours researching and I found one. Um, it's a lot of money. It's like $80 for the holder. But it's, oh shoot, I forgot the size, but it'll uh, fit in one of my lathe holders. So that's coming. Once I get that, then I'm realizing, you know, I wasted a lot of money here. I didn't, this goes from 48 threads per inch down to eight. Nothing I know goes down to eight. 13 uh, on a half inch is the smallest or biggest thread that there is. So this tool, even though I'm spending like a hundred bucks for the insert and the tool, um, it covers everything. So this will fit in any machine and do any job I need. This guy was kind of a waste. I've also got like another hundred in it buying this guy. Then I had bought some more of these inserts 3251s and then i found some alum for aluminum only inserts from china i bought those and i then i showed the other i bought that whole set that covers everything so this i don't know what to do with this thing now it's nice deep half inch fits in both machines so things don't always go as planned um so i guess right now i can just take you over to uh delay and show you this part and what i've got done so far but i'm not going to get the holder for this insert until monday so that's why this video is just going to be real short all right so this is what i have so far um that's turned a diameter it's ready for the threading i've got my relief back here and i decided to just start drilling it out all the way through next step up would be a half inch bit and then bore it out to um 600 thou per print uh not too much more to say to this uh, pretty cool i really like how it looks so far the other thing is I can swing the camera up a little bit here. Is it in there? Yeah, there's the tablet. That's the original tablet where the battery exploded. Um, I did find another battery on Amazon that said specifically for this model, $18. Went in there, it's back up, running, it's charged up. Um, and again, I don't leave this thing plugged in until I'm using it. Only, only when I'm using it. So, put this guy away. Tap aluminum. Uh, not much else to say or share, but man, I live with the Touch DRO. It's just perfect. I'd love to go to some of the Chinese scales, the glass scales, but it would just be huge on the machine trying to mount them, and they're just too big. So, what else to say? Nothing else I can say. All right, well... Hopefully you'll see threading this thing next Friday.